Hello and welcome to Inside New York City Dance, giving you an inside look at the dance world here in New York City. I'm your host, Ashani Mfuko, and today it's all about the body. We're going to talk about body image issues that many of us dancers face every day, and we're going to overcome them and feel good and hot and beautiful by the end of the show. My first guest today is Stacey Sargent, and she is an actress singer dancer as a matter of fact she's a triple threat yes she is and she's also the creator of a short film a documentary film that's called though i'm not perfect it's all about overcoming your body image issues as a dancer and really finding your inner beauty and your inner confidence so she's going to talk to us and also my girl dr linda hamilton she works with performers she's a clinical psychologist she's going to help us to get our minds right and get in touch with our bodies and feel really really good so it's going to be a great show but you know what? It's about dance in New York City, so there has to be some dancing on the show. I went to Lincoln Center out of doors, and there was some hip hop going on at Lincoln Center. Oh yes, it was. It was DJ KS360, also known as Quick Step, with his beautiful wife, Anna Rockefeller Garcia, and they brought their company and their crew Full Circle Productions to the stage, and it was hip hop time at Lincoln Center. So you're gonna see that video, and it's gonna be a great show. So stay tuned. <laughs> guys, it's Ashani and Fuko here with my girl, Stacey Sargent. She is a triple threat. That's right, singer, actress, dancer, fabulous. But also, she's a filmmaker, and she created the film, award-winning film, uh, Though I'm Not Perfect, and uh, it's a great film. It touches on the issues that us dancers really deal with when we're dealing with our body image issues, and it's a great film, and I'm so happy to have you on the show. I'm so happy to be here. Thank Welcome you. to the show. Thank you. I have to just tell you guys, like, the way that you found out about the show or the way that we connected is so crazy. Stacy was watching the show, flicking through the channels and just happened just to come across surfing. the show. How crazy is that? Just and surfing. she just decided she's going to email me. Absolutely. Because you're fabulous. Oh, <laughs> Stacy, stop. Stop, Stacy. Seriously. Um, but I'm so glad that you did because once I looked up your information and learned more about you, I said, I need to meet this woman. I need to really meet her. So tell us it. a little bit about your story, how when you were growing up, you know, your teachers and, and people that you looked up to were telling you, you do not have the ideal body type for a dancer. Well, tell us about that. I, my parents put me in ballet classes when I was three. And the school that I was attending had a, a children's program, a children's company rather. Mm -hmm. And I wanted nothing more than to be in this company. And when I was nine, the artistic director of the school, who was my favorite teacher, right. uh, called my mom and I in for a meeting and went on and on and on about how talented I was, but said that I was too fat and I needed to lose weight. And this was a revelation to me because I, I just danced because I loved it right. and I wasn't thinking about what my body was looking like in, in, in relation to being too fat. Mm -hmm. um, and so she suggested the cabbage soup diet, which was cabbage soup for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for four days straight, and then a very restricted diet after that. I don't remember how long, it, how many months, but it was, it was a pretty long time. Oh my gosh. And I lost weight, and she never said anything to me. She never acknowledged that I lost any weight. She never said anything about being in her, in her company. I was devastated. And I decided that I wasn't going to go uh, back to that school anymore. And then um, through my academic school, there was a dance program in that school. And one of the teachers there taught at another uh, well-known school. And I auditioned and got in. And they put me in the beginner class beginner after class. I had been on point <laughs> for two years wow. and when my mom inquired as to why they did that they said that I was too fat 
So they moved me up oh to the highest uh, level class in the Saturday program until I lost weight and then they gave me a scholarship and then I started training again five days a week. But the, the thought was still with me, no matter yeah, how small I got, course. I always felt too fat. Mm -hmm. And there were opportunities that, um, that came to this particular school uh, that had nothing to do with dance, that had to do with the Met um, or television shows at that time, the Cosby Show, right. and I was always overlooked. And there were always comments about, I'll tell you one particular story, yeah. um, one of my teachers, I had lost weight, my, my weight just fluctuated right. because I would go through these periods of deprivation and then when I got tired and sick of it, right. I would, you were like, Ooh, you know, I'm eating everything. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, at one of my lower weights, I was trying on a, um, a ballet skirt for a recital mm -hmm. and I was looking at myself in the mirror just unsatisfied with what I was seeing and one of my teachers saw that and she said, well, it's, it's good that you're not satisfied. That means you lose more weight. Oh my God, this is so, devastating <laughs> for a young dancer. Yes, I, I think oh. at that age, I, I was probably 14 or 15 and uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, where were your parents? and all of this right. and there was so much shame that I was carrying. I never told my parents these uh, stories when right. my teachers would say certain things to me because I knew that they would pull me out of the school right, right away. And you wanted to keep dancing. And I, wa I were, wanted yeah. to dance. Um, fast forward to high school, I ended up going to high school of performing arts for voice. Right. I played piano. Um, in my senior year of high school, I started hanging around with a lot of the drama majors and mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, I want to act, <laughs> this is it. So I auditioned for musical theater programs because I had no acting training, but I knew how to dance right. and sing and ended up uh, going to Syracuse University uh, and came out and got my equity card a week before I graduated actually. Oh my gosh. And have been, I've, I've been a performer, act, actress, singer, dancer since. Ever since. You've been on television and films. I mean, you've, you've traveled all over the world. So it's, it's kind of like, okay, apparently those teachers from back in the day, it's like you didn't know what you were talking Ooh. about because you've been so successful. So what I love is that you didn't say, okay, well, I showed them. You know, now I'm successful. They were wrong. I was right. Now I'm moving on. You said, wait a second. There are still young girls that are dealing with this every single day in the dance studios, in the schools, you know, and they need someone to help them and to encourage them, Absolutely. which is why you created the Though I'm Not Perfect Absolutely. film. So talk to us about the Though I'm Not Perfect film. Well, I, how um, I got the idea, the idea came to me, I was uh, doing Damn Yankees at City Center in New York starring Jane Krakowski and Sean Hayes, and I was having lunch outside with one of my cast members and we were talking about how we got into the industry. And while I'm telling her my story, I look up and I'm looking at Carnegie Hall, which is where the studio that I first started training at uh, was housed in. Right. And I said to myself, I said, oh my God, had I listened to these people, mm -hmm. I would literally not be where I'm standing mm -hmm. today. And I said, I need to tell this story because yeah. We give away so much of our power as kids to our teachers. We want nothing more than to please them mm -hmm. and they have the key to our dreams. And um, even though I was telling myself I'm to this, I'm to that, and I was not good enough, that, that was what I believed, but there was also, I don't know what you want to call it, but this inner knowing, this inner drive that I had because I knew at a very early age what I wanted to do. Right. And even though I, you know, I did not become a ballerina, I'm actually happy that that happened, that all of these things happened because right. now I'm a dancer, a singer, and an actress, and now a filmmaker. And I think that my experience has only enriched my life oh, and yeah. it's made me a better actress, actually, I think. Because so, you have a lot to tap into and pull from. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And, I think it's so important to share this story so that, like you said, there's so much shame involved with mm. it. So a lot of young dancers, they won't talk to their parents, they won't talk to their, their family um, about it. They just talk to their friends who are probably in the mm. same situation. And sometimes not. Or even, or even maybe they don't because you know, they're so self-conscious. It's self -conscious. very internalized. Yeah. I mean, at least for me, I can speak for myself. Actually, when I came out with the film, one of my best friends who I uh, trained with 
called me and said, I, I had no idea that you were going through this. Yeah. Uh, and I think we're, you know, we're all very different. And um, I mean, the one thing that I can say that has helped to get me on the healing path is really becoming conscious of my thoughts, mm -hmm. what I tell myself. Yes. Um, once I became aware of the negative dialogue that I was having with myself, mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute, I can, I can press pause and say, is this really true? Right. And, and, and just really start to analyze what I'm saying to myself about myself. Right. Um, and you don't have to believe what other people are saying to you about yourself. You can no, change and, that. No, and that's the thing is when you're young, you believe the grown-ups. Right. But what I would like to encourage is to, to start getting kids to ask questions. Yeah. You know, and say, well, well why? Why are you telling me this? Mm -hmm. Or is this really true? And, and, and investigate. Um, it's, so, it's just so important because we... we I've, I've, for so long, even after I got out of college, being an actor, I would give my power away mm -hmm. in auditions where I would walk into the room already apologizing, think, mm -hmm. saying, uh, uh, I, I, I wasn't saying it verbally, right. but physically, I'm carrying the shame. Right. And oh my God, I'm too fat. Mm -hmm. Oh, am I going to get this part? I should be smaller. Oh, if right. I didn't eat that. Or, oh, you know, gosh. or even my relationship to food. Mm -hmm. It's like every time I eat, I'm apologizing or thinking I shouldn't be eating right. this. Which is, not, which is not a healthy dialogue no, to be having no, internally. No. And I I, I don't know, I mean, I'm not so much in the dance world now, and I know that there are a lot of wellness programs attached to schools, mm -hmm. but when I was coming up, there was no education about nutrition and about the body and how magnificent yeah. these bodies are and that they, I mean, they... They're precious. They're precious. <laughs> we need to take good care of you them, know, mentally and, and, to and physically. And learn how to take care of them. Yeah. Instead of just saying, lose weight. I don't know what that means. Right, what does that mean? Like, yeah. I'm growing, how am I gonna lose weight? How, how does that happen? Right. You know? I love but Maybe it. I'm not supposed to be this a size, size, whatever. Yeah. But so what is healthy to... for me? Right. You know, so right. all Absolutely. of these things are, are um, I just want to use this film uh, to, to start this dialogue. That's great. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you did that. And I no. thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for emailing me. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> thank watching you for the show. <laughs> and thank you for coming on so people can learn more about the film at thoughimnotperfect.com. Exactly. Right? Yes. And uh, you guys definitely want to check that out because it's going to be inspiring, it's going to be empowering, and you should share it with young dancers out there who need to learn this stuff. So now we're going to switch gears a little bit, and I'm going to take you on a trip down the street from this studio, actually, to Lincoln Center for DJ KS360, a.k.a. Quick Step, with Hip Hop at Lincoln Center with Full Circle Productions. Check it out. What's up, y'all? My name is DJ KS360, also known as Quick Step. And I'm Rockefeller, and y'all are checking out Inside New York City Dance. and Fuko here for Insight New York City Dance TV and guess where I'm at? I'm at Lincoln Center in New York City for Lincoln Center Out of Doors and today was the party of all parties with DJ KS360 also known as Quick Step in the hip hop community. He's right there with his beautiful wife Anna Rockefeller Garcia. Oh my goodness, today was crazy. You brought the hip hop to the Upper West Side, to Lincoln Center. How was it? What did it feel like for you? It was really good. Um, I have invited Bill Breaking down to the party called Behind the Groove that we do on Tuesdays, every second Tuesday of the month, 158 Bleecker Street. He loved the party and he thought it would be a perfect fit. And he said, let's bring it to Lincoln Center. I saw popping, I saw locking, I saw breaking, I saw the hustle. They did it all. Why, why do you feel like it's important to incorporate all these different styles in your performances? Well, New York City has always been a capital of dance. I mean, we known that since way, way back. So we wanted to represent where the dance community is at today. So you have a lot of fresh new faces, but the styles 
kind of predate, you know, what we're doing right now with maybe flexing or bone breaking, whatever. So we want to just give a platform for those dancers to come and be somewhere, be free, exchange some ideas, you know, maybe battle, maybe not. Um, but just keep the dance alive, fresh, and safe, you know, when we're together, we're safe, you know, we're happy. And so it's important that New York City clubs remember that, because most of the times, Clubbing means drinking, and so the bar is the emphasis. We want to bring it back to the dance is the emphasis, and being creative, and being stylish, and you know, just challenging yourself every time you come out. I love it. One of my favorite parts of the performance today was that you have people of all age groups. They had men, women, young and old, all different ethnicities. Um, you guys bring the community together, and, and I love what you said about focusing on the dance as opposed to other things that people tend to focus on.
So tell me again about your party that happens Tuesdays once a month. Um, tell us where we can find out more about it and stay connected with Full Circle. You can go to uh, the Behind the Groove group page on Facebook. Just you know, tap in Behind the Groove. You can also find me on SoundCloud. That's DJ KS360. The party's every second Tuesday of the month. And it's at 158 Bleecker Street called La Poisson Rouge. That's the name of the club. Welcome back to Insight New York City Dance. I'm here with one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, Dr. Linda Hamilton, who is a clinical psychologist specializing in wellness for performers and performance psychology. So we talked about body image issues mm -hmm. with Stacy earlier. Give us some tips. How do dancers, artists, people in general, overcome negative body image issues, overcome that negative internal dialogue? How do we do it? Well, there are thankfully a lot of good ways to overcome it. I wish they didn't have them to begin with, and that would start with the teacher, with the young girl, age three and up. Yeah. But what we need to know is that our bodies are all different. Seventy percent are due to our genes, mm -hmm. and that we can we can overcome part of it by how we evaluate ourselves. First of all, not everyone's going to be a ballet dancer. Right. Nobody has a perfect body, right. and if we have someone who comes close to perfection, they may not be the most interesting performer, so you don't need that to be a great performer. Mm -hmm. What we need is to be able to dance. Keep your focus on what you can control, which is, how do I look at myself in the mirror? Well, if I am my own worst critic, don't look. Mm -hmm. I have told dancers, take out your contacts. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to look. You don't need to see. <laughs> no, if you're, if you're being your own critic, that bad, no, don't look. Mm -hmm. Work on your technique, work on eating right. You're fueling your body. It's going to keep your energy up. It will help you reach your potential weight. Exercise and cross training, you want to get a leaner look. Pilates is great, mm -hmm. gyrotonic. There are ways of approaching it, but it's not starvation. Okay. And certainly with how we evaluate evaluate ourselves in society most women don't like their bodies right. so it's not just dancers right okay dancers were extreme I would say besides not looking in the mirror not body checking mm. not looking at focusing what's on, wrong yeah focusing on those areas where you're like oh I don't like this and that's all you see or comparison mm -hmm. you know you go into a classroom and you compare yourself to every single person in that room until yeah. you find somebody who has something that you don't have and right. of course you feel worse it comes from insecurity so you don't have to compare mm -hmm. you don't have to look in the mirror you can accept that you are a beautiful person and that your dancing is what you have to offer. Right. And the and the food is is fuel for your body. So don't look at food as the enemy. Like Stacy mentioned, you know, having that moment where you're sitting down and you feel ashamed, or, I shouldn't be eating this or I shouldn't be eating at all or no, you need to eat to survive. <laughs> you know, how are you going to walk and breathe and live and dance if you're not eating? So Absolutely, but trust takes time mm -hmm. and she learned to distrust food. Now she has to have a new relationship with food, right. you know. Uh, the fact is, eating throughout the day, eating the right kinds of foods, see a registered dietitian if you, if you don't have the um, facility yourself, mm -hmm. eatright.org is a great place to go find a dietitian and find someone who works with athletes and dancers and get the information. Combine that with exercise and cross training and you will reach your potential. And then it's just that inner critic. If you would not say it to your best friend, don't, Don't say, say it to yourself. yourself. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Dr. Linda. It was a pleasure to have you, and you gave us some great tips. Learn more about Dr. Linda Hamilton at drlindahamilton.com. That's it, guys. This was Inside New York City Dance. Thank you for tuning in. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Inside NYC Dance. See you next time. I was hooked. I remember just loving to go to dance class every Saturday. Some of us that had put on a good amount of weight and we had is like, you better get rid of it quick. How do you lose weight while you are still growing? And I was sticking the toothbrush to the back of my throat. I could put together this perfect ballerina then everything would be great.
Say